Hello, welcome to another video. My name is Michael, and today we're going to do an update video from my 101 series that posted a few months ago. I'm really, really grateful for all of the views that we got on those videos. Um, when I was recording the 101 series, I really wasn't sure how many people were going to watch it, and they're currently our most viewed videos on our channel, and I'm just really, really grateful. I'm really grateful that y'all watched it and engaged with it. Looking through the comments was really fun. So um, yeah, now we have an update. So the collection was at 100. Since that time, it's now up to 120. So today I'm going to be sharing 20 wands. Uh, some of them I featured in other videos, and I'll be sure to mention that so you can go check out maybe in more detail those wands. But um, yeah, let's get right into it. First up is going to be the Sorcerer's Stone Premier Wand. Uh, so this I featured in another video, but it comes in this green box. And so these wands were given out as promotional items for the uh, first Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone premiere in uh, United States. So not Philosopher's Stone in the UK, but Sorcerer's Stone here in America. Um, so this one is actually made of wood, the entire thing. And it's got um, right there, Harry Potter in the handle. And so um, it's a really rare wand because it was only given out as promotional items. These weren't sold anywhere, but uh, it was a really cool design. And this is based off of the second wand that Harry uses in Ollivander's shop, the one where he um, accidentally breaks the vase. So that's uh, this one. And the box is also kind of designed after the box that that wand came from. So rather than the wands with the ribbons, um, this one was kind of more of a square that had like a kind of a green snake skin. And inside it's just um, simple, satin there's no padding or anything um so you had to be there to get this or find it on ebay like i did and so uh happy to have this very rare one in the collection like i said this one has been featured in another video so we'll be sure to link that down below Next is going to be another rare wand that I featured in another video. And so this <laughs> massive <laughs> chunky wand is the uh, Wizarding World of Harry Potter opening day ceremony wand. Um, it's got this great big handle and you can see it has this light up tip. So on the day that the Wizarding World of Harry Potter opened, which is carved into the bottom, June 16th, 2010, um, if you were there on that day, uh, you might have been given one of these wands and there was a special ceremony with uh, Daniel Ratcliffe re, uh, leading the whole crowd and casting Lumos to light up the lights on the castle. So um, unfortunately, it doesn't light up anymore. I've there's no way to get into this. There's no like screws or anything to open it up. I kind of have to break it in order to get into it. So I don't want to do that. That's not worth kind of getting it to light up again. So I'll just respect this as a little piece of uh, Wizarding World history. And it's a really great addition to the collection. So we're going to continue with park wands for now. So if you watch the 100 wands series, um, you can see all of the different park wands, the interactive and non-interactive versions. And there were three that I was missing at the time that I didn't have the non-interactive version. So those were the ones when Wizarding World first opened, the designs before they introduced the concept of the interactive wand areas in the parks. So the first one is going to be Reed. And so yeah, no interactive tip on the end. This is just a simple wand. So these designs were unique to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And this one was kind of re, um, redone to be an interactive wand. So if this looks familiar to you, it's because it's still sold in the park just with the interactive tip. Um, but it's Fred's handle and uh, Fleur Delcour's um, length. And so another Frankenstein design. Um, and uh, that, yeah, that gets added to the collection because I count the interactive and non-interactive ones separately. So that's where I get the number there. Next is gonna be Hawthorne. Um, Hawthorne is one of the, in my opinion, most boring designs uh, they released. Again, no interactive tip there. Um, this one was also reimagined as an interactive wand where it has the interactive tip there. So it might be familiar to you. Um, I kind of wish they had redesigned it because honestly, this doesn't really say much to me, but you know, it's, a, I don't know, still a good piece to have, uh, but yeah, really boring and not one of my favorites, probably not the one I would go to. And then the last park wand I needed that I had to search for a very long time on eBay for this one for is um, Elder. Uh, 
So not the elder wand, but this one is like made of elder according to the park, even though these are all made of resin. Um, no interactive tip again, but yeah, this is elder. So this is kind of based off the Death Eater skull wand. It's not exactly the same. The skull at the top is a little different from the Death Eater skull wand, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. And this one is also now available as an interactive design. So with the tip there. But yeah, this one was the hardest one to find. Um, it took me a very long time to get this one. I'm not sure, maybe Elder wasn't very popular for the people uh, back before they introduced the interactive ones. I'm not sure why, but uh, but that was the last one. So that wrapped up my non-interactive wand collection. So there's 13 of those. And then the last park wand that's going to be in this update video is going to be the 2020 Collector's Edition wand that came out um, earlier in the summer. I have done an entire unboxing and review of this wand, but it's really lovely. It's one of the most intricate handles that really has ever been kind of released as a wand. Um, it's got all these different designs on it. It's interactive, so it does have the interactive tip. Um, it comes in a beautiful collector's box. And like I said, I've done a, a full review of that one, so link will be down in the description so you can find out more about that wand. So next in the video is going to be the Noble Collection wands that I've acquired since uh, filming the 100 wand videos. So these are all going to be from the Noble Collection. Um, so wands that were character wands that are based off a specific character rather than like the parks where they're kind of original designs. So the first one is going to be Percy Weasley. Um, I really like Percy's wand. I like how long it is. Um, his is uh, about as long as Arthur's. So they've, uh, the Weasley's uh, most of the Weasleys have wands out. Um, it, it does have like kind of an interesting handle and um, his is also the same as Cormac McLaggen. Um, if you get the wand collector book, Cormac McLaggen has the exact same design as this one, but it's a slightly different paint color. So if you wanted to get Percy's and Cormac's, you could just buy two of these and then repaint it if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, I like Percy's a lot and it's, um, yeah, it's good. I, I'm, I'm not crazy about his character, you know, but he's, he was redeemed in the end, so it's all good. Um, but yeah, I like Percy's wand. Next is gonna be Oliver Wood. And so Oliver Wood's design, um, so we, he, Oliver never really um, used a wand, um, but he did have one for Deathly Hallows Part 2. Um, in one of the scenes, you can see him swooping by on a broomstick where the, the troll is like, killing everybody with a, um, a Quidditch hoop. And so since he was in Deathly Hallows Part 2, they did give him a wand. And so this was officially his design for that movie. Um, it is the same as Professor Sprout. And so hers is a light brown where, so it's still got this, um, the same shaft and the same um, kind of woody, barky handle. Um, but hers is exactly the same. It's just a different paint job. So um, maybe that's why Noble Collection sold them because they have, uh, <laughs> they could use the same mold and just let somebody uh, paint in a different color. So that's Oliver Wood. Next is going to be Goyle's wand. Um, Goyle's is quite hefty. Um, it's really like, I think one of the thickest wands that Noble Collection has put out. So I believe his wand was introduced in Sorcerer's Philosopher's Stone. I'm, um, I don't actually remember them being present for the charms lesson where they were learning when Guardian Leviosa, but I'm guessing that would have been the first time that he had a wand because that's the first time Draco did. So um, pretty thick, pretty hefty. Um, you could like bash somebody with it. So um, it's pretty chunky um, and it, it does kind of have that Sorcerer's Stone, Philosopher's Stone era wand where like it was looks like it was made on the lathe um, rather than kind of being those more organic designs that were introduced in Prisoner of Azkaban and later. Um, so that's going to be Goyle. Next wand is going to be Nigel. Um, so Nigel was the little kid who was introduced in Order of the Phoenix, who uh, was hanging out with Dumbledore's army. Um, so he kind of replaced Colin Creevy, since Colin Creevy didn't continue on for the rest of the movies. And so he had a wand for the, um, the DA meeting scenes. Um, his was also kind of adapted into a Wizarding World wand. So one of the early ones that was redesigned. So if that looks familiar, that's because they um, took it on there. But but um, yeah, Nigel's is, a, is an all right wand. For such a small kid, it's still pretty hefty, uh, pretty lengthy. Um, so yeah, this one's great. So yeah, there we go. There's Nigel. Next one is going to be Madame Pomfrey. Now I had no idea how small Madame Pomfrey's wand is. It's tiny, even in the movies. I mean, she has it in her apron at one point, um, but it's so small. <laughs> this is one of the smallest wands that Noble Collection puts out, and I had never seen it like beside another wand before. Um, I guess it's not one of the more popular designs that they feature in the kind of the displays. So um, I had never seen it compared. I mean, we'll put it up next to Percy's and it, it's just like minuscule, um, tiny handle. 
Um, it doesn't, it like barely fits in my hand. Um, so I, I'm not even sure how she holds it. I don't know if she has a tiny hand or, or what. Um, I'm guessing there were probably scenes in Deathly Hallows Part 2 where she used this because she did, um, she, was she, uh, the, the character was part of Deathly Hallows Part 2, which is, uh, when they introduced this wand, when Noble Collection put out the Deathly Hallows wands. Um, so that, that's when this was put out, but, a uh, really small wand. Um, I think Katie and Lavender Brown ha and this one are some of the, the smaller, smallest wands that are out there. So there's Madame Pomfrey. So next is going to be Scrimjower, uh, or Scrimjor. I'm not really sure which which way you pronounce it, but um, so yeah, we never actually see him use a wand. Um, he uh, was introduced in Deathly Hallows Part One, um, giving that speech like the Ministry is strong, and then he gives the um, the will to Ron, Harry, and Hermione. Um, so we don't actually see him use a wand, but he did get one, and so this is his design. I do like the little piece here. Um, we see that with kind of a lot of the Ministry wands, they tend to have some kind of like a little middle piece here. Um, but um, to kind of two two ridges there at the end and then kind of like a silvery decorated part here in the middle. Um, I, I do like this one. I like that it kind of has that grip there and so um, got good length to it and a nice round handle. So that is Rufus Scrimjower's wand. And then next will be Scabior. So Scabior, um, Snatcher, um, I like his wand a lot because it looks like obsidian. It's a little different from all the other ones where it looks more rock-like rather than wood. Um, so kind of like a like a icicle that was broken off. Um, it's a little short compared to the other ones and very pointy. Um, so he his wand, um, I, I think that he was disarmed at Malfoy Manor by Bellatrix um, when she was freaking out about uh, where the uh, Sword of Gryffindor came from. And then he actually has a different wand in um, Deathly Hallows Part 2 whenever he runs at the, um, he, he pulls out his wand to kind of do the, the little fleck of protection spell that was coming down and he's holding a different wand there. Um, but this is the one that he has in Deathly Hallows Part 1 and that's the one that Noble Collection sells. So the next one that we have is going to be Rubius Hagrid's wand, which is of course also his umbrella. Uh, so the wand part, I guess, is right here. I've done a full unboxing and review of this wand, so you can find that in the description below. Um, but it's lovely. I, I think this is a really great, this is technically a prop reproduction rather than a wand. It's not actually in the wand category on their website, but in the prop replica. So if you're looking for it, that's where you'll find it along with Lucius Malfoy's walking stick. Um, so yeah, it fully opens. Um, I'm, I haven't tried it in the rain. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get it wet or anything. I'm going to take good care of it. I've got lots of umbrellas for uh, everyday use. But uh, yeah, I think it's really cool they put this out. Um, and it is a wand, so I do consider it part of the collection because his wand is there. Um, I also like how it looks like a wand at the handle. Um, it could kind of be a walking stick, but I, I do think it looks like a wand. Um, kind of leading to think that maybe it's not broken pieces concealed inside one, uh, the umbrella, but it's actually actually like kind of the handle is still exposed and was kind of shoved onto the end of an umbrella. So I like the concept. I like the design. I think they did a great job with it. So really great part to have in the collection. So a lot of the ones that I just showed you, they were either um, gifts that came to me from somebody else or they were um, purchased secondhand either through eBay or from um, somebody I connected with on social media. Um, so actually all of the ones that I've shown you other than Hagrid's Umbrella and uh, the uh, Collector's Edition 2020. Those are the only two that I've actually bought directly from either Novo Collection or Universal Studios. Um, with all the statements that J.K. Rowling has made um, regarding the trans community, I, I don't find them acceptable at all. And um, trying to get away, uh, even though I've, 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 I've loved collecting wands, I've really enjoyed it, I'm still trying to get away when it's possible to get away from buying licensed merchandise because J.K. Rowling does benefit uh, financially from those purchases. And so um, Haley had a really great idea that maybe instead of buying so many directly from the source, uh, like licensed replicas, what we could do is contact the fantastic artists that we've been connected with through social media and have them create the wands so that that way we can uh, support artists, we can support uh, small businesses and still enjoy the wands that uh, I love so much. So I think that's a really great idea. And so um, the next three are all gonna be from Orchard Works. So Orchard Works Wands, uh, he does his own ideas. He, uh, I've been to his workshop, it's a really cool space. Uh, and so he'll do commissions, um, custom wands, your Pottermore wand, uh, both of our Pottermore wands are right there from him. And so the next three are gonna be from him. 
and he did such a good job. Uh, so the first one is going to be Lucius Malfoy's second wand. So um, of course, uh, uh, Voldemort takes Lucius's wand and snaps the handle off uh, at the beginning of Deathly Hallows Part 1 and uses it to try to attack Harry. So Lucius was without a wand. Um, but of course, Ollivander was captured down in the basement of Malfoy Manor. So um, so he had Ollivander make him a new wand, which was kind of uh, not quite as flashy and pretty as his first one. But um, Orchard Works did such a good uh, such a good job on this. You can go online and look at Lucius Malfoy's second wand, and this looks like exactly the same. I'm so pleased. Um, so he uh, I carved this out of out of real wood. So this is 100% wood. Um, don't have to worry about breaking this one because it's a, a resin replica. Um, so yeah, so he has this one in Deathly Hallows Part Two. You can see it in his Death Eater belt that he's got a different wand in those scenes. And so Orchard Work did a fantastic job on this one. I, I absolutely love it. Next is going to be Katie Bell's wand. And so I had mentioned that hers is one of the shortest in the series. Um, and so you can go online and see pictures of it. It's very short. Um, we actually got Orchard Works to make it longer because I didn't like how short it was. Um, I thought it was too small, actually. Um, it's, it's probably about half the size of this one. And I just, I really prefer this design. Uh, I think this just looks cooler. It's, it's better to hold um, and it looks better as part of the collection. So that's my personal preference. Um, so he, I think he did a fantastic job on this. It's got like the exact same handle with these kind of twirly bits that kind of shift into bumps. Um, it's got nice, lots of nice grippy spots. Uh, if you watch my other videos, you know that I love a good grip spot right there. Um, so it feels very comfortable in the hand and it's just not as tiny as the Noble Collection replica one was. So i um, very grateful for this one too. And so the next one is going to be Crab's Wand. Um, I'm so blown away by how well he did on this one. Um, you can look up pictures of this online. This looks exactly like the Noble Collection replica one. Um, he got the exact kind of wood that his wand would have been made out of for the film with these striations in it. And it, it's, it's like it's a perfect replica um, and it's it's completely wood like this is a fully wooden wand um, it's not nearly as heavy as um, as Goyle's wand his is really hefty but this is really light and elegant um, there's a reason I kind of put some of these wands off until the very end of my collection because I wasn't really excited about it but uh, it, this means so much more that uh, that these were really made by somebody who I know and uh, that to support his business and feature it here so um, thank you so much Orchard Works for for um, putting these together for me. And uh, thank you, Haley, for getting them for me for my birthday. I really appreciate it. The next artist I'm going to be featuring is going to be Rosewood Wands. And so Rosewood Wands has created quite a few of our wands. Um, you can see those in our Wooden Wand Collection video that I'll need to do another update for. You got two of those out, so I'll need to do a third pretty soon. Um, but the first one that he made for me is going to be Pius Thickness's wand. Um, so Pius Thickness has the, uh, the kind of the two silver bits here, the kind of the uh, flared handle, um, and it, it just looks so good. I'm, I'm so pleased with it. Um, again, it's completely wood. Um, the, the wand makers we work with always tell me what the wood that they use is made out of, but I can never remember. <laughs> so I'm sorry for not uh, knowing what wood he actually made this out of, but uh, maybe he'll watch this and comment below what it was. I'm sorry. Uh, so very happy with this one. So this is Pius Thickness's wand. And then the very last Noble Collection character wand in the collection to wrap up everyone that's been released to date is going to be Lavender Brown's wand. And so another one that I believe is a little bit smaller than this, the, the, the replica, but I'm just so pleased to have something that's more kind of regular size for this one. Um, Rosewood Wands was actually kind enough to gift this to me, so I'm, I'm just so grateful. Um, he did such a good job getting the uh, line there in the bottom, the kind of different shape, and then the two bands here. Um, it's just such a good replica. I love having it in the collection. Um, I've got a wall display for all of these, so um, I love seeing them there. I love having these artists' uh, work represented there. It really means a lot, so thank you so much. And so the very last wand that we're going to have in this video today uh, is an, uh, another very special one. Um, so. There are a couple of really, really, really rare wands out there, some that are um, especially hard to find just because of the way they were released, like the Sorcerer's Stone promo, promo wand at the beginning of the video, um, either because they're not available anymore, like the uh, Mad-Eye Moody Goblet of Fire design that I featured in the uh, 100 wand collection series, um, and some because they were special gifts that were only provided like for very specific promotional needs or something else. Um, so this one, is 
another recreation from a very talented artist, and that is going to be the Marianne Wand. Um, and this is actually made by Kiko Illustrations. So uh, he hand sculpted, um, using reference pictures, uh, hand sculpted this design, and then worked with In Hero Toys to recreate this wand. Um, so the story of the Marianne wand is Marianne is kind of a, a, a cultural figure in France who represents um, democracy and freedom and liberty. She's kind of designed after um, the spirit of liberty. And so in the French Ministry of Magic, there are several statues around the kind of atrium area, and each one represents Marianne kind of in a different artistic art deco style. Um, on one of those statues, the Marianne uh, uh, icon is holding a wand that actually looks like this. Um, so it's the kind of the angel form with the helmet, uh, with the shield uh, on the chest. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. So the statue is holding that wand. Um, so for the Crimes of Grindelwald movie, the prop department actually made um, a limited run of that wand from the statue and gave them out as gifts to certain cast and crew members. Um, I, I think it's a pretty common practice to give out gifts um, as part of a film series. Um, and it probably also dissuades maybe some of the actors from stealing their wands uh, because they were giving, get, being given a special wand anyway. Um, so because it was a gift, a kind of a special item that was only given out for them, um, those wands are really hard to find. Um, it's really hard to, to come across them through secondhand sellers. Um, and when you do, they, they tend to be very expensive. So that really wasn't something I was interested in doing, but when Kiko started posting that he was carving out and making his own Marianne wand, I got so excited because I thought like, wow, this is a way that um, I can kind of have the wand in my collection while supporting somebody that I respect so much and uh, is so talented. So whenever he announced that he was going to be working with Hero Toys to recreate his sculpture, so this is a cast mold um, and he did a, a, a limited run of 10. Um, I hope I was one of the first people to message him because I got right on it and um, it just arrived actually yesterday. So I'm so thrilled. I'm so pleased. Um, I'm thinking that uh, the the, um, the wands that were given out as gifts were given out in um, the triangular wand boxes from um, the Cosma Ajacor wand store. That's the in um, Place Cachet, the French kind of diagon alley. So they're triangular wand boxes. Um, and Kiko actually sent uh, a sticker that is his logo with the triangular logo in it. So I'm thinking it'd be really cool to um, to make maybe a triangular wand box to house it in because I definitely want to take good care of it and I don't want it to get damaged. So I'm thinking that might be a fun project. Maybe a DIY I'll post on here whenever I get around to making that. Um, but I'm so thrilled to have this in the collection. Thank you so much, Kiko, for making them and showing your process. Please go check him out on Instagram um, along with Rosewood Wands and Orchard Works. I think it's so important to support um, small businesses whenever you can. I think it's a great thing to do and so very happy to have this in the collection. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you so much for watching the first 100 Wands series. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Um, if you want to see more, comment below. Tell me which one is your favorite. Um, I, the only wands that I'm missing from the collection right now are going to be Ron and Hermione's Cursed Child Wands. Those are the only two that are left. Um, then there's, I think, three very rare wands that um, are kind of in the line with Marian, the Marian wand, where um, those will be extra special to find someday. Um, but once I get Ron and Hermione's Kershaw ones once you know it's safe again uh, for Broadway to open up hopefully be able to get those then uh, we'll just see where it goes from there so the collection isn't over there's still lots of wand designs out there and there's so many talented wand artists out there I'd love to work with so um, please stay safe uh, wear your masks uh, social distance wash your hands all that good stuff thank you so much for watching keep the magic alive and we'll see you later bye